What is up, guys? Thank you for tuning in to another brand new episode of Chodinko. I know it's been a while, but trust me when I say it's going to be worth the wait. Why? Because we're finally explaining the rules of Chodinko. So now, whenever you're going to be a contestant, you can just refer to the rules and you'll be caught right up to speed. So this is Chodinko. This is the most complex game show of all time. And this is uh, these are going to be the chapters. So we've got 14 chapters we've got to run through. I say let's just jump into it. So welcome to Chodinko, the most complicated game show ever conceived. It's not just a game show, it's also a game and a show. So each player chooses a game piece. You get as much money as possible and avoid getting crim charges. That's the aim of the game. Codes would be the currency of Chodinko and that's hence the name. So the goals go from the birth tile all the way to the finish tile. So you go through the streets, you get arrested, you go to court, then you go to trial, and then depending on your trial, you either make it to the outside or you go to prison. It's very straightforward, and there's four zones in the game. Now, I don't expect you to understand what this table actually means, but I'll just go through it very quickly. So this is the first zone, this is the streets, this is tile zero to eight. The kerfuffle is fight, the crimp charges are blank. You do get second serve and you have full black market access. Then we go to court. This is tiles 9 to 21. The kerfuffle is snitch. The crim charges get you straight to the crimatron. There is second serve and there's full black market access. And when you get to prison, you have tiles 22 to 40. So the kerfuffle is fight. The crim charges are blank, but there's no second serve and you're stuck with prison prices, which isn't ideal. And then the outside. This is tiles 22 to 30. The kerfuffle is battle. The crim charges are blank. There is second serve and there's full black market access. So what is the black market? Well, it's a question that's been on my mind, so I thought I should explain it. So the idea with Chodinko is you earn your chodes and you can spend them on cards in the black market. So the cards can be sold to your opponent for any price or back to the black market for the purchase price. And prison prices will apply to players that are in prison. So the cards each do different things, right? You can use them at any point in the game. There's no limit on how many of each card that the player can purchase. But each one that you, each additional one that you buy is going to cost 10 more shows. So the price goes up the more you have them. And each player can only visit the black market on their turn before they roll their dice. So these are the cards. Each card does something different, and there's two kinds of cards. There's trap cards, which are single use, and then there's status cards, which are constant. So here are some of the, I'm gonna go through all the cards real quick. You'll see from the cards in the black market that there's a lot of choice in this game in how you want to play it. So the Chemi Stemi, take all your opponent's chodes. Rough luck, send your opponent directly to prison. That's tile 23. Char Clark, give your opponent a brand new criminal charge. Limplom, move your opponent to your tile. Flam Timmy, take one of your opponent's dice. Brick Job, steal one of your opponent's trap cards. Well, that one gets interesting. Hunky Dunko, move your opponent back one tile. Bullshit lets you redo any game of skill. You lose, you just go bullshit. Get to redo it again. Rip Stample is moving you five tiles forward. And then Chan Jam is moving to your opponent's tile. And then Rat is giving your opponent one of your crim charges. So obviously they all do very very different things. And these would be the status ones. So these ones are ones that you can actually inflict upon your opponent. So Dimmy, you can buy more dice. Jackalaka, you can increase your leverage. And Bribey YBs are alibis that you can use when you go to trial. So the question is, what are crim charges? I know they're basically criminal charges, right? So the idea is you get the crim charges through no fault of your own, and then you need to defend your charges when you reach trial tile, okay? That's tile 22. The players get a crim charge whenever they lose a game of skill. If they're in court, they go to the crimatron to find out what the crime is. Outside of court, they just get a blank crim charge. Now, if a player reaches nine crim charges, they actually win the game. That's a jumbo crime. And they go straight to trial and they are guilty of all their crimes and they win. That's how Chodinko works. So this is the Crimatron, okay? So players go to the Crimatron whenever they have a blank crim charge and they're in court. So they gotta find out what that crime is. So there's, this is a, just a little example here of what the crime might look like. So this is human trafficking, seven wheelchair ladies from Russia. So the, what the Crimatron does so well, better than any other AI technology, is that it predicts exactly what crime you're accused of 
with 100% accuracy. So there's just some of the stats uh, just to show you that we're dealing with some serious hardware here. So the gameplay loop, I probably, you know, it's hard to jump in. You might be thinking, hey, you've, you've only getting into the gameplay loop now. I don't even know what's going on. It's, there's a lot going on. Okay, so just fucking hold your horses. Okay, we're getting there. So, first step, it's your turn. You have the option to go to the black market. Then you roll your dice. And then, you know, if you're outside of prison, if you don't like your dice roll, you can second serve, roll it again. And uh, then, obviously, you land on the tile, you get a game. And once you get the game, are you going to wager? Well, that's up to you. And then you play the game, and there's the outcome, and then it's the other player's turn. So, obviously, that is the general loop that's going to be interrupted by different things happening on the board. So, there's, these are the games. You're probably wondering, what the hell are the games you're talking about? Well, there's four different kinds, and each game has a 30-second timer. So, the first ones are games of skill. These are guessing games, and they're two-player. So each game of skill has a winner and a loser. The winner gets five chodes and the loser gets a crim chart. Each game of skill has a unique outcome that gives the player a chodinko if they get that outcome, if they do a really good guess. So the requirement, the, Jesus Christ, the requirements for a chodinko are specified in the rules of each game of skill. They're all different. A chodinko gives the player 100 chodes. And each player also gets a Chodinko if they have exactly 69 chodes or 420 chodes. So the first kind of game, it's a game of passion. These are speaking games, all right? Now, these are one player, right? So the player gets five chodes when he wins it or she. And the next are passionate challenges. These are negotiation games, all right? So these are two player. And there's three difficulty options that can earn different amounts of chodes. We've got hard, medium, and soft challenges. So obviously each challenge gets a bit more difficult and obviously there's a higher reward for that. Each game requires convincing your opponent of something. So you need to offer your opponent part of the winnings to actually convince them. Otherwise, why on earth would they let you just get free money? You know? So in terms of the passionate challenge, these are the outcomes that you will get. You can get a done deal, right? So player A, he gets the challenge done. Player B, they had a deal. They had a wager. Okay, so player A, he's going to get his leverage multiplier. He starts with an X2 times his wager. So if he put in 10, he's going to get back 20. Plus he's going to get the 20 for the challenge reward. That's the hard um that's, that's the hard challenge that he did. So he's going to get 40, but he agreed to give his opponent, you know, 10 of it. So he gets 10, he gets 30, and the other guy gets 10. Then there's bamboozle. That's the betrayal option. So, you know, you really, you really need to know when it's actually worthwhile to, you know, bamboozle your opponent. The player loses the wager, and the opponent gets nothing out of it. And then there's fumble. So this is where the player A fails the challenge, but he gets a lower challenge. So say he went for the hard challenge, but he actually only got enough to do the medium challenge. So in this instance, the player loses the wager, and uh, but they win the lower challenge amount, and the opponent gets nothing. So now without a wager, it's pretty much the same, except there's, there's a few slight tweaks. So when you get the done deal, it's the challenge complete, and you just get the challenge reward. You didn't put any money in, so you're not gonna get that. Uh, you're not gonna get a return. And then obviously you have to give the amount to your opponents as well because they, uh, they, they made a deal. And then there's bamboozle, obviously the betrayal, uh, both the player and the opponent get nothing. And then uh, in the fumble, the player gets the uh, lower challenge reward and the opponent gets nothing. So next we've got the wagering and the leverage. What am I talking about when I'm saying you're, you're, you got a leverage multiplier? So Jackalaka is one of the status cards that you can buy. The so players can wager on the outcome of any game of skill, their own game of passion, or any passionate challenge. The leverage multiplier determines how many chodes a player wins for each successful wager. So both players begin with a 2x leverage multiplier. So next we've got the arrest tile. This is tile 9. Now when a player lands on or goes past the arrest tile, they are arrested and now they're in the court zone. They're in court. So a coin is flipped to determine if the arresting officers are clean or dirty. If the player calls it correctly, the cop is clean, the player is free to go and gets a spin on the Wheel of Innocence. If the player is wrong, the cop is dirty, the player gets a crimp charge and they go to the Crimatron. 
lightning round. Uh, so when a player actually lands just on tile 9, they get to play the lightning round. They flip a coin. Heads is Ruchu Rava and Tails is Rhymy Timey. If you want to know how those games work, you're going to have to watch a different video. And the way these work is you get five for each answer in each of the games. Next, we've got the trial tile. This is the money maker, folks. This is what separates Chodinko from any other board game or any other game show. This is trial 22. Now, if a player would go past the trial tile, say he got a six and he was on 17 and it will put him on 23, it's actually going to stop him right there at the trial tile. I know it says verdict. It used to be called verdict, but now I call it the trial tile. So sue me. So um, there's a few stages to the trial. So first we've got the introduction. So the bailiff announces the defendant versus the state of Chodinko and introduces the presiding judge. Then we go to stage one, which is the arrangement. Uh, it's not the, arra the arraignment, Jesus. So the judge announces the defendant's crim charges and then the defendant gets to plead. So innocent, guilty, or insane. Now, if he has a bribe YB or he has a rat, he can use these at this point uh, obviously, the bribe YB is just going to get rid of the charge and move on to the next charge. And then if he's got a rat, he can just give that straight to his opponent while he's in court. So in terms of the trial tile, uh, these are the things that you can plead. So if you plead innocent, here's what happens. You just proceed to the next stages of the trial. Cross-examination, closing arguments, and final verdict. If you plead guilty, then that case is closed. The crim charge removed and the defendant moves forward two tiles in prison. And then if they plead insanity, the defendant is absolved of all charges and moves back to the arrest tile. So the trial tile, there's three more stages uh, when you're here. So stage two is the cross-examination. So the defendant has to go through a dialogue tree that I've written, and it'll be based on the crim charges that they have. Stage three is the closing arguments. So the opponent then has 30 seconds to convince the ladies and gentlemen of the jury to convict guilty. And then we got stage four, which is the final verdict. So we flip a coin to determine whether the defendant is guilty or innocent of that crim charge. And then we return to stage one for any other crim charges that the defendant has. And then, you know, after that, it'll determine whether or not they go to the outside or they make it to prison. They only need one, they just have to be convicted of one crim charge to go to prison. So the more you have, the more risky it can be. So then we've also got snakes, a la snakes and ladders. So the first one you'll encounter is on tile 11, which is in court. If a player lands on this tile from the streets, they're not going to be arrested because it's going to take them straight back into the streets. So they'll end up on six there. Uh, so, and then each time a player actually goes into court, they, they're arrested. But this doesn't count as getting arrested because they're going straight back out onto the streets. So the next snake is on tile 19 and it just moves you back from 13. This is in court. And we've got two here. So we've got tiles 30 and 33. So tile 30 is going to move the player back to tile 21. So that means the player gets a retrial and now they're only tried on any new crim charges they've gotten while they were in prison since the last trial. And then trial 33, tile 33, the player moves to tile 25. So this is a way from getting from prison and making it to the outside. It's a nice little shortcut. Next snake will be on tile 27. This one is actually from the outside and it's gonna bring you back in the court. So you're going from 27 to 17. And then obviously you're gonna be tried for any new crim charges when you get to the trial tile. So um, the kerfuffles that I was discussing earlier. So what is a kerfuffle? It just, when you land on your opponent's tile and the kerfuffle changes depending on which zone you're in. So if you're in the streets, it's a fight. You take all your opponent's money. If it's in court, it's a snitch, and you give your opponent all of your crim charges. If it's outside, it's battle. So you actually have two options. You can move one tile forward or move your opponent one tile back. And then in prison, it's fight again. It's prison rules. I mean, what would you expect? Lastly, we've got the wager announcement. So obviously, when you've struck a deal in one of the passionate challenges and you're making a shit ton of money, there's going to be different announcements. So say you get 25 chodes. I'm going to say, well done. 50, good job, great job for 75, great job, uh, 10 will be for 100, holy cow, uh, 150, holy moly, 200, holy guacamole, and then 500, holla holla get dalio, and that is it, folks. 
well we actually have to one last thing next slide is the wheel of innocence so wheel of innocence awards the player with a random free card from the black market it's very handy there's three instances where you will visit the wheel of innocence so if you're arrested if you go to court and you get arrested by a clean cop and you have no crim charges you get a spin on the wheel of innocence if you go to trial without any crim charges wheel of innocence and when you use all your money to purchase the secret black market item the hail mora it costs all your money no matter how much or how little money you have so folks that is how to play chodinko those are the rules i've made it as condensed as possible obviously there's some very unique scenarios where things not specified in the rules have already been kind of chosen but i didn't want to make this video any longer than it needed to be if you have any questions or you want to support the project send me an email i'm sure you'll be able to find it somewhere or just leave a comment down below anyway i am out